it's the final song of the second semi-final. We're going to be talking about Promise by Voyager, who are representing Australia in Eurovision 2023 after finally getting internally selected by the broadcaster. So Yannick, what are your thoughts on Voyager's promise? How many years did they try it? Six, seven? <laughs> and finally, finally they they are going to the division. That's I think that's part because it's, uh, that they're finally going to the division as well after trying so many times. And they seem like an amazing people, amazing people as well. Uh, and uh, this this is one of I think. The contract ends this year for Australia as well. I'm curious if they will uh, prolong it uh, for another few years. I hope they don't because I think Australia is a very interesting uh, country in Eurovision. Uh, but I have big bucks about promise. First of all, I am not the biggest fan of the song. Uh, I, if I Pretend I do not hear about the lyrics. I enjoy the, 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 the backing track a lot. I think it's very interesting and brings a lot of elements, but I think that the, the lyrics are bringing it, it down a lot. Even though Danny is an amazing vocalist. I think his name is Danny. I think his name is Danny. Uh, he's just an amazing vocalist as well. Uh, so I'm very torn about, about uh, Promise because from what I'm, I I saw from the parties, he, they were amazing. I think this is an they're an amazing performers, and we saw that last year. Dreamer was a hit. I mean, it, it did win uh, the televote last year. I think in in uh, our decides, uh, but it was just because of the judges they kind of were were lower. But I think they will qualify easily because closing the final with a song like that. Easily uh, uh, qualifying from the final, and uh, there is a history of songs from the last spot on, especially in the second semi-final, not qualifying. But I think this is a safe, a safe uh, qualifier. Maybe I will slowly be. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of am slowly uh, warming up the song, uh, but yeah, I am. Excited to see what they're bringing to, on stage because this would be a breaker for them as well. Hope for them, uh, wishing them well. Yeah, it's not my favorite song so uh, yet. Maybe we'll warm up to it uh, in three weeks. I mean, I'm happy that they're finally going to get to Eurovision. They they tried really hard. I mean, last year they did actually. I just double checked. Yeah, they won the televote in Australia. The sides. And it's just, I, I'm glad to finally see them because this is one of the kinds of music that I really like. It took a little bit of time for me to really warm up to the song. Um, I also came in with, ex, you know, expecting something just because I liked the previous attempts. And because they got internally selected, I was like, oh, so it must be like so amazing that the Australian broadcast didn't even want to hold the national final. And I think that made me expect something that I shouldn't have been expecting. But this song has really grown on me. I really like it now. Um, yeah, this combination between new wave and prog rock and a bit of like scream up, it hit some hints of metal in here as well. Just these disparate genres that are really just they they they've written the song so well. They've they've really recorded it well. It's been produced well. Uh, then when they bring it on stage, they're really they're seasoned performers. They know what they're doing. They know how to get you engaged. Even if this is the only song you get to hear from them, they help you get on board. And I do. The one question I do have is how will it translate on camera? That's for rock performance in general a bit of an issue sometimes at Eurovision, especially when it gets pyro heavy. And I expect a lot of pyro for this song. Frankly, I'd be disappointed if like. There isn't a ton of pyro, but they can make camera work tricky sometimes. It's uh yeah, it's 
it just I I really like the song, but it did take me some time to get on board. I do understand why people some people don't like it. Also, why some people don't like the lyrics. I'm look just as Melody Festival has a love affair with the words fire and desire, or this year pain and rain. If a song has something along the lines of promise me things are going to be all right, I'm going to be on board. And well, we all know the song. Yeah, I just want to add up like I, I'm saying that uh, it's a sacrifice, but I think we have to also remember what happened in Vishlatnyar because that didn't do well in the in the Lemot as well. Even though everyone's saying that oh, this is such a safe qualifier, it's my winner of the year as well. I'm like, uh, it's hard to say, but. Uh, very hard to say that which one, yeah, that unfortunately didn't click with most people. Uh, so I'm also having this in mind, like maybe not everyone would like this and just first uh, flat to qualify as well. I, I would say there, um, Vishla Nyara was specifically, it was like this post hardcore metalcore song. It was very hard. Um, well, it did have as the best post hardcore, post hardcore aficionado checking in here. Uh, has like it does have these very accessible melodies in parts of the song. It remains very abrasive, and that's that's the point of the genre. And I mean, you can still then perform it accessibly and do a great job as AWS did with Vizlatniar, but it's a lot less accessible than this. And I say this as a compliment to the people watching this muse adjacent prog rock pop metal bit of everything of course it could struggle i mean speaking of bands that technically do pop metal although they didn't send to your vision the rasmus i'm going to be honest as a former Erasmus the fan they coasted by on name recognition last year former former that's, that's, um, uh, that's, that's a good uh, word to <laughs> but that's what i think and, and even then it's i do feel that they should be pretty all right with qualifying. I'm also double checking. Hungary finished actually fifth in the televoting, in the semi final, in 2018. Mm, okay. So I'm I'm seeing the grand final result being poor. Yeah, That's no, they I... they actually because they did very poorly with the jury. They finished tenth in the final in semi, so they barely qualified. And then they finished twenty first in the in the uh, final. Yeah. So, but. With that, I mean, this might be Australia's last time in Eurovision. I hope not. But if it is, I'm glad they go out with one of my top three, with, in my opinion, one of the top three Australian entries, with something that Eurovision fans have been wanting, that Voyager fans have been wanting. It, this is something that very much feels like everybody, ha just like with Georgia, uh, for people who have been listening to this as a podcast, this is something that people have been asking for, for Voyager to represent Australia. And they finally get to do it. And they are also so happy to just be the great representatives for Australia, for, for Western Australia specifically. They're, I checked. They're the first people in general to be from Western Australia to uh, rep, to be at Eurovision. Even like uh, pre people that came in from Australia before Australia entered the contest were all from other parts of the country, mostly Sydney or Melbourne. So that's just cool. It's just a new It's just a new element to add in there. So in the final, they could finish absolutely everywhere. If this connects with the juries, if this has a good running order, stuff like that, this could scrape into the top 10. This could be like 8th, ninth, 10th place. But this could also be bottom five at the same time. It, it's very hard to predict. But you, I would expect to see this in the final. I would be very surprised if this doesn't qualify. And and I'm happy that that Voyager will be in the final because they just are such great performers and I like the song. Mm -hmm.